Today I'm talking about the differences between audio hijack and loopback. If you're involved with audio on a Mac at all, you may have come across these two pieces of software before. They're extremely powerful, very functional, easy to use, beautifully written bits of software by Rogue Amoeba. And this is not an advert, it's really just an appreciation because these are two bits of software I use all the time and could not be without on my Mac. But I think there is some confusion over the two as to kind of, well, do you need both? Are they doing basically the same thing or are they different? And that's what I want to try and clarify here. Firstly, audio hijack. Well, audio hijack is all about routing and processing and manipulating and recording audio, an audio chain from start to finish. But that starting point and end point can only be using input devices, physical or virtual, and output devices, physical or virtual, that already exist on your system. Or Audio Hijack does not create virtual inputs and outputs. That's the job of loopback, and that's the key difference between these bits of software. So in loopback, you can root audio. You can send audio from an application to a particular output. But loopback, by doing so, creates that output, which you then select in your software. And that's, that's, that's a major, major difference between the two. So I'll, I'll try and explain a little more in detail by, by showing you on the screen here. So here I am in a session in uh, Audio Hijack. This is an empty session. And we have all the sources and effects and things like that that we can do within Audio Hijack down the right-hand side. This isn't a video to go in detail about how Audio Hijack works. I'll do that in a separate video. But um, let's just say, for example, that I want to take my audio from Quobuz, which I've got here, and I've chosen Ander, Anders Enger Jensen as the artist here because uh, I'm pretty sure this won't hit a content match on YouTube, so at least I can maybe play a bit of audio from, uh, from, this, um, from this album. So I wanted to capture audio from Quobuz, and I wanted, I don't know, just for argument's sake, let's just do a super simple example. So I'm going to just stick, stick my application in here. We'll zoom in a little bit so you can see more clearly, and I can select Quobuz. I've got a, it's a running application, but I've already got it there in my recents. I can select that as my application. So that's now hooked in, or will, as soon as I press run on this session, it'll hook into the processor ID of Quobuz, which means that Quobuz cannot route audio to anywhere else at that point. Regardless of what's selected in the software itself, it effectively dominates, takes control of that application and takes all the, all the audio from it to go to wherever you then choose to send it. And in this case, I'm then just going to go straight to an output device. And my output device uh, can be maybe my MacBook Pro speakers. My MacBook Pro is closed up and in the, just to, to my side. It's kind of in its little kind of dock thing. So really playing it on the MacBook Pro speakers seems a silly idea, but at least then we can hear it and uh, potentially, you know, figure out what it's doing. And for, for just for argument's sake, I'm going to put in a level meter as well. So if I just look down uh, down here, I can see I've got some nice VUs. I'm just going to stick them between. So here we go. In the Audio Hijack now, we've got a super simple setup. Audio from an application to an output device. Let's just test and check that that works. So going into Quobuz now, if I press play on this, well, it'll, that should come out of my main speakers for now because I haven't got the session running yet, which it is. If, you, if I just unmute my main speakers here, you can hear that on my microphone, hopefully. Uh, if I now run this session, it'll say, nope, you're not having that audio from Quobuz anymore. That's now coming into me. So I can press run on here and you can see immediately that it's hooked into Quobuz. We've got levels coming in on the VUs, which are super cute. Love those. <laughs> absolutely brilliant you can even show them in your menu bar as well and the audio which you can't hear but I can assure you is now coming out of the MacBook Pro speakers and uh, on the right hand side here I'm sorry just here I've got my uh, RME mixing desk and I now have no audio for Quobuz coming into there because it's been taken by Audio Hijack however that's a really easy simple example it shows you how Audio Hijack works and uh, what it's effectively used for. Uh, but if I just stop that session now, that will probably switch back to my RME now. That wasn't muted. 
So there we go. I've got my audio back in RME now. But uh, let's just think of a different scenario. So let's say I'm on a Skype call with my parents. Yes, my parents still use Skype. Uh, if I'm on a Skype call with my parents and I want to play them a song from Quo Buzz, but I want to do it kind of nicely. I want to have that coming in on uh, through into Skype. Well, I can't really do that in this scenario, can I? Because I can take a microphone, so let's just go up to my input devices here and I can maybe capture the mic. Let's say I want to capture my Rodecaster mic, something like that. So I can have my microphone coming in from my Rodecaster, which I can just show you if I run this now. Got my audio coming in there. If I play something on one of the pads on my Rodecaster, in fact, it's a bit more, a bit easier for you to see, isn't it, if I stick another... Uh, level. Let's just try some level meters here between those two. So we've now got level meters between the input device, the roadcaster input device, and uh, the VU meters. Doesn't really matter. And if I just play a pad. Oh, actually, has that put it there? Oh, it has. Yeah, that didn't. There we go. So you, you can see now that I've got audio coming in. I'm just going to stop Quo Buzz a second. You can see that I've got audio coming in from my microphone, which, which would be great. And I've got my audio coming in from Quobos. But what's my output? Well, I need it to go to Skype, but I can't select Skype as an output. I can't put an application as an output. I need the output of this to become an input for Skype. And that's where the functionality of Audio Hijack ends. You cannot do it because, as I said at the start of this video, this is all about using virtual and physical inputs and outputs that already exist. That's where loopback comes in. So if I go into loopback now, I can create a virtual input that effectively does the same thing, that I can then go into Skype and instead of selecting my Rodecaster Pro or my USB mic or my mic MacBook mic or whatever it is, I can select that new virtual input, that actual sound device, as it will show in Skype, as my input. So let's just do that now, and I'll show you what I mean. So let's just kind of uh, steady out on this loopback window, and I'll add in a new virtual device, and I'm just going to put this, I'm just going to call this Skype, I'm going to call it Skype input. And I need to add a couple of sources to this. So I can add my Rodecaster Pro. On here because I need that because that's where you know I can show you the has that added it there you go just showing you the uh, level that I've got levels coming in for my Rodecaster Pro I don't need this pass-through device so I can just do a command delete on this and I'm also going to add what, what else did I say oh, Quobuzz I wanted an application so I want Quobuzz so now I'm going to hook into the audio again on there I'm going to stop the session stop the stop the audio hijack session uh, go back into uh, loopback and I've now got Quobuzz and my Rodecaster Pro coming in, and I've now got this as an actual input device that I can select in Skype because that's what Loopback's able to do. So if I play something, so I'm, I'm not I'm doing a very good job of switching between my windows here, but if I play this audio again, I've got this audio coming in here on Quobuzz and my Rode. So you can it's mixing that's mixing in with that there as well. But if I go into Skype now, what I can do, hopefully, if this is updated, let's go into the preferences of Skype and go to audio and video. My microphone, instead of being my Rodecaster Pro, I can now select Skype input. So now I can have that as my main input for talking to my parents. So I can play them some music directly from Quobuzz in the Skype call, not like over the microphone or anything like that, directly from the application, because I now have this as an actual input device. So there we go, that's the kind of main differences between the two bits of software. The two are complementary because they are designed to work side by side. If you really think about it, these two bits of software together, your options are endless around routing of audio mixing stuff up, creating your inputs and outputs in the way you want them, adding effects, compression, EQ, whatever you want. You can even, in Audio Hijack, use um, VST plugins as well, or as they're called here, AU, you know, it's, it's Mac, so it's, it's audio unit effects rather than VST. So if I wanted to, I could get my Rodecaster mic and I could say I want to put that through a, a VST plugin, and then I want it to go into Skype. Well, that's kind of cool, isn't it? 
you know, I could potentially do that. Um, so yeah, there's um, there's all sorts of ways you can mix and match this to get the result you want, and some of them being quite complicated. There is a price to pay, so there is some some latency involved in this. Depending on how good your computer is, you can reduce it in Audio Hijack. Loopback inherently has a small amount of latency. It's not massive, but um, won't matter for a Skype call. It's absolutely fine for that. But there is some latency involved on uh, on late on um, hijack. As I as I say, there are options to where you can reduce the latency, but then you you know you have more chance of kind of skipping and, and glitches and stuff. But as long as you've got a decent CPU on your um, you're using a decent computer, you won't have any problems. I've reduced it to the lowest latency, and I've had absolutely no problems whatsoever. So uh, there we go. If you were wondering about what the difference is between loopback and audio hijack from Rogue Amoeba were, hopefully that's provided a little bit of clarity.